don't go in deeper, step back and really mm-hmm. have a vision for how you want the firm to operate end to end and what you want not only your client experience to be, but also your team member experience. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the latest episode of Strategy in the Virtual Controller. Uh, and today we've got a really exciting episode for you. For long-time listeners, uh, my name is Damien Greathead. And for first-time listeners, my co-host is Penny Breslin. I'm sitting in sunny Sydney. Penny's in San Diego sunny, today. sunny San Diego. Or? Yeah, not cold Wyoming. <laughs> not cold Wyoming. But speaking of cold, our guest today, Rachel Fish... Where are you coming to us from today, Rachel? Snowy. I'm coming to you from snowy Toronto. Snowy Toronto. So yeah, it's literally 85, 90 degrees here in Sydney, probably what, high 60s, low 70s in San yeah, Diego. Like and 60, then it's 65. And then in the 30s in, in Toronto. And then let's say, yeah, two, two degrees Celsius. Yeah. And for <laughs> Australian and Canadian friends, two degrees Celsius. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyway, folks, strategy in the virtual controller, we're focused on helping accountants and bookkeepers build their business with intention to help learn from some of the mistakes that we've made along the way, that we've seen along the way, and share our insights into building this client accounting service practice, uh, building that that business with more intention to, to build much more, much stronger relationships with your clients and much stronger relationships with your team. Today, as I said, is an exciting episode because we've got a special guest on. Her name is Rachel Fish. I've known Rachel, God, it must be 10, 10 plus years now, I think, thinking plus. about it. More. Yeah, we're into the plus, Damien. Where we were into our, well, not quite teens yet. Um, yeah. But Rachel, maybe we just kick off with a little bit of yes. your background for anyone that sure. um, doesn't know who you are. Tell us a little bit about Rachel Fish, your, your accounting background and, and some of the sure. experiences and, and I'll sort of chime in with a, a few things along the way. Yeah. So I feel like I need to present a gif of Titanic where the old lady goes, it's been 84 years because it it, kind of, it feels like that, right? It's like I took accounting in high school and I just got it, right? There's something about you either understand debits and credits or you don't. And I'm a lazy student. So it was like, it was easy. I flew through the material very quickly and like, oh my gosh, I can make a living at this. This is amazing. So when other teenagers were like getting retail jobs, I was working in offices and doing accounts payables and all of that kind of stuff. So I I took the kind of straight to work path, which brought me, oh gosh, through several different industries. And then I was, I'm trying to think the timing of it. I think it was, I was on mat leave with my second daughter, who is now, she's going to be 13 next week. And just kind of sitting there going, okay, I'm not, I don't have my designation. I can't compete with those that do anymore in terms of being corporate controller. I was already a controller, but really kind of finding a place where I could have a really nice professional atmosphere. I was in a pretty small town, second largest city in Manitoba, but a pretty small town anywhere else and and just started my own practice. And that's where we met. So it was originally called Fish Financial. I liked the alliteration, but everybody thought I stole insurance. So quickly changed that to <laughs> Fish Books, which I, people call me Fish Books to this day. So yeah. it's still my Twitter handle. But yeah, that's where we met. And not to give anything away, but I've been talking to several folks from Dex, formerly Lucy Bank, and I got some pretty good like cred for being for using Receipt Bank before you were even there, Dean. Like I remember when you arrived on the scene because wow. it was. I think, after I think we'll I have to go back to the history. Oh no, actually, yeah, because you you were on the road doing the QBO training with, yeah. with old mate beforehand, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, that's I right. was. Yeah, and it's like, who's this? Damien guy. I yeah. think you were who's, coming over. Who's this like handsome? Funny who's, and, <laughs> and, and I yeah, think that's so. actually really interesting because Rachel, you were out on the road teaching yes. accountants and bookkeepers QuickBooks Online <laughs> yeah. in the, the mid sort of 20, 2015, 2014, maybe. Yeah. Better. Well, the first and, and, QuickBooks Connect was like 2014. So it was even like a year before that. Yeah. Even. So yeah. And so that was sort of very early in, I, I think very early in sort of the, the QBO adoption phase. Yep. What, would you, what, what were some of the fond memories and maybe not so fond memories of talking to accountants okay. this time about, and Penny and I were talking sort of cloud for, for a long time as well. Yeah. What was those um, memories from way, way back then? Oh gosh, 
So first of all, I want to share a little bit about the story of how I got there, right? So how do I go from having my own book, bookkeeping, starting my own bookkeeping practice to traveling around teaching for QuickBooks? And what it was, I reached out to the training company. I'm like, hey, you need to come to like Nowheresburg, Canada to come and teach QuickBooks because there's a ton of small businesses that use QuickBooks here. And and they're like, you're probably right. So tell me about yourself. And somehow by the end of the conversation, I was signing up for a trainer and I had my first <laughs> webinars booked. And within a month, I had taught every QuickBooks course in their portfolio. Then what was really interesting, so I started doing that. Then what was really interesting was I had a client at the time. So this was in early Fishbooks days and he was using a Mac and I was using a PC and we were trying to figure out what's out there where I don't have to recreate all of your work in another platform. And honestly, QuickBooks Online was brand new to Canada. It was about 10 years behind the U.S. at that point. It was those ugly blue screens where you couldn't print a check and you couldn't do a bank rec. And it was quite terrible. But it was the only thing where we actually didn't have to replicate 100 percent of each other's work to be able to work together because I wasn't going to move to Mac at the time. He wasn't going to move to PC. So so then like fast forward about a year or so and the training company reached out and said, so we have this new product or QuickBooks wants us to focus on training this new product. It's called QuickBooks Online. I'm like, well, yeah, I used it for one of my clients. And I'm like, what? Like. So many write the book for us. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, yeah, I use it. So this was, I mean, if you can remember back in the day, the switch from classic, so all the blue screens, to what was called at the time the new Harmony platform, kind of the multicolored. It was like the original iteration of the platform you see now. So I feel like any bookkeeper or accountants that were around in those blue screen days, we have trauma bonded in a really incredible and amazing way. We remember all of the things that, that it didn't do. Anyway, so yeah, so my very first QBO training was in Winnipeg, Manitoba in the winter. Now, like they don't call it winter peg for nothing, right? Like people, <laughs> it's cold there and people are cranky. And I had just received- Canadians are never cranky. I <laughs> This is uh, cranky Canadians. So I'm sort of, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, so I was, I was doing the training. I had just received the material the night before. So I, I hadn't written the material because again, it was on this brand new platform and I hadn't been migrated to that platform yet. So much of it was really new. And so I'm trying to go through the content, just getting like crucified, like completely pummeled with how useless it was and all of the things that it didn't do and how it compared to desktop. And I mean, you name it, it was like, it was not a good situation. Thanks for bringing all that up, Damien, because now <laughs> recalling that. I'm I like, didn't bring it up, actually. I didn't bring it up. You brought it up. I... But it was, it was, I mean, but those were the road, those were the training on the road days. I mean, yeah. that was even when we would travel across Canada with these massive Pelican cases full of laptops because one of, First of all, that's how we trained on desktop to make sure that everybody was on the same version and that it was all loaded up with the test company and all of that stuff. But also one of the big challenges with QuickBooks Online is that, yes, everybody was bringing their own laptop, but then some people were in Safari and some people were on Internet Explorer. Internet and Explorer, people, yeah. And it was and so it was like trying to then teach a class with a uniform experience was really challenging because of these all these other issues. So. Yeah, we would literally travel across the country with these massive Pelican cases full of laptops and then have to go into the hotels and set them all up sometimes the night before, sometimes the morning of, and then just hope that the Wi-Fi, the hotel Wi-Fi worked. Otherwise, oh, we were all screwed. Was, was strong enough for, for 30 laptops sitting for, in the room right, accessing the right. same website at the same yeah. time? Well, I mean, I think that's something in common that you, Penny, and I have. We've both <laughs> been the road warriors and yes. training and seminars and walking around early the hotel morning. to see where's the best hot spot. Where's the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, racing to the the business center to realize their business center is this dinky little PC from right next from to the snapshot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where the printer always jams. So if you have yeah, to yeah, print exactly. off one or two more, it hasn't, uh, it hasn't printed in, in three years. But now all yeah. of a sudden, we've got to print yeah. thirty pages of, of something. So, <laughs> Rachel, then so that was quite some time on the road trading, running yeah. your own just as well. 
Yeah. Um, was it from there that you then went into Deloitte Canada to try and help them? It was. As? Yeah. So what was really interesting about that was, so first of all, I mean, that's where the whole concept of the ecosystem and starting to connect with these apps that were on the road. So like Practice Ignition and Receipt Bank were two of kind of the very first ones as part of that ecosystem. And we would talk about workflows and we would talk about tech stacks and we would, and I mean, in many cases, it. I feel like some people are still having that original yeah. conversation. Oh yeah, they are. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I want to play. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. But also... That's when we got to meet and connect with all of these other people. And we're all trying to have the same conversations. We're all beating our heads against mindset. We're, and then starting to speak at conferences. And now we're talking about tips and tricks in QBO instead of just like standard workflows. And, yeah. and what is, yeah. And, and why isn't it like the desktop? I, I think they're still having that conversation. But this is where, this is actually where I started to meet some of these people who are running either bigger firms or bigger or teams at massive firms. And because of my role doing the contract training, I would often get called into calls with QuickBooks and Receipt Bank and Practice Ignition. Because I remember, I think it was you and Tom were sitting in the in one of the meeting rooms when I jumped in and did like the bank fee demo. And so there would be these like long two or three hour meetings. And I'd have a very small segment where I was kind of going into the product and actually demoing it. But what was really fascinating to me was the much more strategic conversations that were happening at that big firm level around cloud accounting and its impact. And so, yeah, what ended up happening was I was kind of fascinated by that. A role came up to work with Deloitte Canada. And so I ended up moving my family from Winter Peg area, Brandon, Manitoba, to Southern Ontario or in the Kitchener area to actually come and work at Deloitte Canada. And that's, of course, when we worked probably the closest together in terms of like our regular day to day workflows mm-hmm. and things like that, because we ended up basically being your client. And so, yeah, there was a lot of shifting of kind of going from the person who's on the road and doing all of the teaching to now, okay, now I need internal buy-in and I need to be teaching yeah. partners instead of bookkeepers. And so it was a much different approach. Yeah. And and it was sort of interesting because you jumped in at the deep end in, in terms of Deloitte. You didn't jump in, in in like a three partner firm where you just had to get three partners to buy yeah, in. No. at the big four top end of town. And, and, yeah. And, big, and I, right? I, think I think it was sort of interesting because I think ultimately firms see the opportunity. And this is what Penny does a lot of work on this, is helping take that vision of what the opportunity from CAS is in, into the actual day-to-day. But yeah. I think partners understood it. Partners understood the concept of it. But that whole change process of moving yeah. from the traditional compliance deadline-driven world, that shift was, and still is, a massive challenge. It's much more in a, in a company the size of Deloitte, because I did it at Baker Tilly. Yeah. They weren't quite as big as they are now when right. I did it. And yeah. wow, I understood what you went through with that. Because well, well, they the concept was just down the line. Everybody going. So yeah, the challenge where it landed in terms of the business line or the segment was just not the right place at that firm. So basically we ended up as part of like an account, like accounting and advisory or like accounting and assurance almost, where there were lots of client opportunities, but every single conversation we had to get an element of buy-in. This was also where the partners were kind of handing us around like a hot potato. Nobody really needed, wanted to own it. Nobody really understood how impactful this could be for their business. And yet there is a whole different business line or segment that was Deloitte Digital where looking back now, that would have been the perfect place for it, right? Because then they already have that mindset of being Mm -hmm. technology first. They already have that, let's work with the data, let's adopt really great tech and workflows. So for me, going into Deloitte where we did was probably not as trying to be nice here. We could have done a lot better if we had been in a segment of Deloitte that already had the mindset that we did when it came to the way that we worked and the way that we leveraged technology. And that was a big miss. Yeah, it, but so, that's interesting, isn't it, though? Because obviously, it, when you're doing debits and credits, you assume that the place to do those debits and credits is in in the accounting and insurance or account, uh, accounting and assurance. Versus yeah. to your point, it's 
the debits and credits are the what, but the actual how and the why yeah. is the way yeah. it is. Much more in line with this other element yeah. of the firm. And much yeah. more important today than yeah. it ever was. Yeah. Because yeah, of the for speed sure. of which that how is getting to you. Yeah, absolutely. And the why. And I, th- and I think something that's also really interesting as well, and this is what we see in a lot of firms is, to your point about partners sort of hand, no one really taking ownership of it, but also partners sort of throwing clients at you willy nilly, sort of oh uh, one restaurant client, one real estate client, one construction client. More often than not, the the, the real pain in the ass clients as well. And so it was, hey, it's always, it's this, always the pain you? in the ass. These are the people we don't want to deal with. So let's give them to something we don't believe in. <laughs> yeah. Just, just, just keep the yeah. Time, clean it up. Yeah. Yeah. So we can prove that we don't have to change because right. we failed at this. Therefore, we know they're going to fail at it. Yeah. And I, I don't want to skip ahead too far. Like, but, but then there's the practice that you now are a partner in, and yeah. we'll skip ahead and we'll come back to, to post a and whatever, is actually Realty sure. Tax. Yeah. It's, what is it? Realtytax.ca? Is that how people would it's, find? It's just Realty Tax. But yeah, the website is realtytax.ca. We do have some US customers. So we're looking at maybe making that a little less Canadian specific, but it is a fully niche firm. So exactly. and also within real estate, there are so many then sub niches, right? So when you talk to other accounting firm owners, in many cases, when they talk about real estate, what they're talking about is property managers, real estate investors, kind of almost getting onto the edge of new construction type sales. We are exclusively agents and brokers. And so they're a very underserved segment of the real estate industry. And there are actually very few accounting firms out there that are doing anything for agents and brokers. And, and I'm, glad, I'm glad you brought this up. This is new information because I've got some people I think you need to help. <laughs> yeah. Well, not me Careful. anymore, but we'll talk about that. And just yeah, yeah. talk about that, okay? Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, but, yes. And it was because you came into this firm and that was with Melanie. Is that right, Melanie Schroeder? Was that her so firm? I, you, you yeah, I bought, it for, I bought it first, actually. And then I had to hire for a tax manager. Got it. And although we had known of each other, we had been in the same circles, but really didn't know each other. Yes. And then we were actually both on the FreshBooks Partner Advisory Council, and they had an event for all of us in Toronto as I'm working on the job description for a tax manager. And she's like, can I see that? And so it was like, love at first job description. And she's like, oh my gosh, this is me. I would love to figure something out. And so we continued conversations and she joined about six weeks later. Yeah, fantastic. But I, and so you actually bought into Realty Tax. So you purchased that. You and, and I bought it flat out. Yeah. And, and was that just basically because you could have obviously resurrected fish books, you could have done, started again. What, what prompted you to go into such a, a specific niche? Or yeah, niche. So, oh, very yeah. niche. We're Canadian. I'm Canadian. Yes, yes. So it was actually we had a regulation change in the fall of 2020 in, in Ontario. And so accountants, bookkeepers, pay attention to the regulations in your regions. <laughs> they are huge business opportunities. So and I knew that there would be some kind of effect. I wasn't quite sure what it was. I saved a couple of like domain names and social media handles that had to do with accounting and real estate. But I was working at Sage at the time. So I had gone from Deloitte to Sage and I'm like, there's an opportunity here. I'm not totally sure what it is. I'm going to kind of park these domains and these social media handles and let's just see kind of what comes of it. And so over the next few months as the regulation came out and rules were changing and these real estate agents were incorporating, there was so much marketing out there from accountants and bookkeepers around, let us help you incorporate or let us help you with your... This, these books that now need to be done in a different way because you're a corporation and instead of being a sole proprietorship or self-employed. And so, but everybody had the same message. Mm. And so, okay, I gave it another thought again. And I'm like, if all of these changes are happening at the agent level, I bet you there's maybe some friction or there's some other dynamics that are changing at the broker level. So they're probably getting requests now from agents from accountants and bookkeepers of these agents that they didn't have before for information that might not be readily available, right? As they now have these additional reporting requirements. So I really took a look actually at the broker back office. And so it's very desktop heavy. It's very admin heavy. It's very paper heavy. And over the next two years, with the help of a client friend, guinea pig of mine, 
we basically completely figured out the end-to-end full cloud solution backed by Zero. actually. It also connects with QBO, but Zero has a stronger integration where we can have the entire thing in the cloud with the data flowing the way that it needs to, with transparency on income directly to the agents and really kind of explore that side of like that digital transformation on the broker side of it. So I was actually working for, by this time I had left Sage, I was working mergers and acquisitions for a US accounting firm. And a friend reached out, a mutual friend and said, hey, my buddy's selling his firm. Would you mind talking to him for a little bit? Which I got all the time, right? It's And those chats were usually what's going on in the market, who's buying, who's selling, what are the prices going for? Like, how is that all working right now? And then I realized that it was this firm called Realty Tax. And God's honest truth, the very first question that I asked was, why don't you do more with brokerages? It's like, well, we like to work in the cloud. You can't work in the cloud with brokerages. I'm like, actually, (laughs) you can. And this is how, and I kind of mapped it all out. And they were like, oh my gosh, I had no idea. And I haven't heard of half of those products that you just named. And it was clear pretty quickly that there is definitely an opportunity there. So then I had a choice, right? I could, as you said, resurrect fish books and, and can still do that niche, but more starting from scratch again, this many years into the future, or, and somebody else buy this firm. So I immediately know that I have a competitor that does have a couple of years in yep. that does have a couple hundred clients in because a lot of regional firms were looking for that industry vertical or I could buy them and give myself a bit of a head start on getting yeah. that niche firm built up. So, so yeah, I decided the first is cheaper, but I decided for the latter. Yeah, no, it's, I, I think it's sort of fascinating and, and Penny jump in at any point, but you talk about the, so very much focused on digital transformation of accounting firms for a long time. And now talking about yeah. digital transformation of brokers, how, what was their response? Because again, as you said, very manual, very paper, very, the, that old school way. What yeah. was the response? So once you'd worked out your end to end system and as you yeah. then took that to, took that to the client base, what was the yeah. response? It's funny to hear this because I live yeah. with a broker who insists that we can't do it that way, but I've yeah. got him using zero. In the gut with everything. Yeah. It is hard. It is back to a decade ago accounting firms. That is the pushback. Also because kind of the number one software that so many brokerages use in Canada, they are very entrenched in the real estate associations. They have grown by acquisition. So even though we were able to figure out the whole end-to-end solution, there's about four apps or four tools in there, one, two, three, maybe five, depending on kind of their preference, four or five different subscriptions that we basically need to piece together. Because this other company has grown by acquisition, it's all called the same brand, even though under the hood, it's still separate products. But the feeling is that you can go in and you can order whatever modules you need behind the scenes, they'll put it all together and give you that single product experience even though it's quite terrible. So, so I think so that's it's the, the, it's the say it's the sage of real estate. That was good. Or the MYOB or all the MYOB or the sage. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fine with that though. That's exactly a good description yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah, no, it's true. And so as they as you speak to your clients about this, are they are they could I sort of I always thought that the accounting industry were just the laggards and because they're quite conservative and all of this stuff. Stuff, But yeah. actually what, what it is, it, it's much more entrenched than that, isn't it? It's when Absolutely. It's first, we, first we had to convince the accountant. But the thing is, the accountant part of CAS and the benefit of CAS part of your advisory is now convincing the client. Yeah. You know, I just did this today, just a shot aside with somebody who had said, well, we might not want to go with a third party payroll. We kind of like it done manually. And I said, but that's not what we agreed to in the contract. So I'm going to have to re- finish the contract and charge you more. And they said, why? And I go, because that's going to take us lots of extra Way hours. longer, yeah. And I said, by the way, I don't really want to take on the responsibility of that. So I'm not going to be the signatory on this or anything like that. <laughs> They're going, what? Yeah. And I go, why do you think your current accounting firm wants to give it up? Your yeah. CPA called me and said, I don't know what's out there, but would you pick something for them? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, And they're like, yeah, but it's not as safe. And I'm going, oh, Jesus Christ. 
we're back at this conversation, the safety conversation, the yeah. cloud conversation, oh, right? back in however many years yeah. ago. Uh, yeah. And their IT guy was on the call. Yeah. And he's like, well, how do we know? And I'm going, oh, God, can I just give yeah. you a little story? <laughs> because if it's on my server, it is safe. Yeah. It is <laughs> safe. I can, I can, I I can physically see it. it. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's sitting behind that locked door. Yeah. And so, so yes, okay, you do, the account, we sold the accountants on the cards. Now the yeah. account has to turn around and sell yeah. their client. And some of them have to be sold. Yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting. And I would. Yeah, because I mean, and that's what we did on the road of selling receipt bank to accountants, but then it was yeah. still up to the accountants to then go and talk to their clients. The clients, the yeah. Benefits of, I think that's of this hardest. integrated system. Yeah. It's much more difficult because we're selling, in your case, you guys were selling dem Have you? We use it with quite a few of our clients. Yeah. Um, our firms that use DEX. Um, yeah, for sure. But they have to then go and convince their clients. And I'm selling just one piece of it. Yeah, yeah you're selling. Is, yeah. So now there's the other side. What is the client with the client experience? And yeah. I have to support your app with my clients using their experience, which is often different than the experience I have. Yeah, for you sure. Know? So it's, there's a lot of moving parts. And uh, Rachel, I'll bet you the debits and credits aren't as important as the who was when when? <laughs> yeah. Well, I would say like a year and a half in, and I think we're just starting to really starting to get momentum with some of the brokerages that are fed up with these beastly solutions. And so, yeah, I'm still going strong. Yeah, wonderful. So, like, what, what have you noticed? Different. What about you is different? I think as a as that firm owner from fish books to realty tax. Like, what have obviously the industry niche where there's a great opportunity, the cloud side of things. But is there anything in terms of how you've set the, the practice up that you mentioned your tax manager, et cetera, et cetera? We yep. talk a lot about roles and responsibilities in accounting firms and bookkeeping firms and making sure you're not hiring yourself, hiring yep. another one of you. How are you thinking about the organizational structure of your firm? Sure. I mean, well, first, I'm a lot older than I was when I started Fishbooks. Why is and, Why is <laughs> and probably lazier. So, I mean, I this <laughs> what the, seller, the sellers were really fantastic because they allowed me to, I mean, I was starting our carbon implementation before we even had papers signed because, and they helped me with getting carbon implemented. So from a practice management standpoint, me recognizing that we needed that single source of truth, we needed something that had consistent processes as we grew, knowing what the growth opportunity was. They were using, so they were using Asana. I have no problem against Asana. I like Kanban views, just like anybody. What I will say is that there is a difference between kind of a, a firm that's operating in the cloud and a cloud-minded firm. So mm -hmm. they did everything paperlessly, but engagement letters were done in Word, not Ignition, right? Client files, the way that they captured information from clients, very desktop-minded, very paper-minded, even so though it was a cloud application. Yeah. Or no. print off, write their credit card information on the form and then scan it in a, through email. Good. Right. Like, yeah. so there's a thing called PCI compliance. So, yeah, it's just so for me to come in and to get their cooperation and assistance in getting some of these systems set up. And we made a few a couple of false starts. There are a couple of tools that I really wanted to work that I tried very hard to make work and just didn't for like the better I got to know the clients, the niche, the profile of our ideal client, the more I had to refine what mm. actually worked and didn't work you from both a process and tech standpoint. Don't you find that's part of what going into a niche? I'm an American, but I am. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Nietzsche. Yeah. Absolutely it is. Anyways, if you go vertical, yeah, you can fine tune the apps that you pick yeah. because yeah. when you go to a trade show, you can see, oh, this app does this, but and the big picture, how does it fit? Yeah. It's not quite, I love the app. I like the people, but it's not quite what's going to fit to this. Yeah. Company. And if you have uh, that niche, yeah, much easier to keep that tech staff. Really nice and tight. 
Yeah. It's and important. dialed in. And yeah, I had a really big aha moment. It was probably about this time last year as we were starting with tax season. And I'm like, nobody is happy. Like the team wasn't happy. Our clients aren't happy. We're like, they need more value. We need another dashboard. Like what is going on? And I just, I like woke up in the middle of the night, one of those kinds of moments. And it was like, oh my gosh, they need simpler. They don't need need more thrown at them. They actually need us to pare down. And so we, that's exactly what we ended up doing. We just stripped it right down to the super basics of, because not only were we then spending way too much time per client, but they weren't appreciating our outputs anyway. So we kind of stripped it down on both ends and yeah, it's been much better ever since for sure. Uh, we had um, Jan Haugo on, I think, before QuickBooks Connect, sort of October, November last year. And we oh, were sort of Jan. talking about how long does it really take to get things moving really well and working really well. And a, a couple of minutes ago, a couple of moments ago, you said 18 months in, we've learned so much, we've adjusted, but good on. And as you said, like tax season last year, there was sort of everyone, everyone was frustrated and and not happy. So yeah. many partners, so many firms would have packed it all in and just gone back the other way. But yeah. I think, but I feel like you, you started with a, a very clear intention as to what you wanted to build and develop. And, and it was really about just refining, simplifying, simplifying a, as you go. It must have been difficult though, as you said, in, in the middle of tax season and everyone's unhappy for you just to sort of throw your arms up and just be like, oh, fuck it. Let me just go back to the way it always <laughs> Like what sort of kept you pushing through? Because I knew it was possible. And honestly, yeah. one of the biggest reasons for me going back into firm life again after being out for several years was I felt like I hadn't yet landed at demonstrating what I knew was possible. And if yeah. I gave up, like, then um, <laughs> forget it, right? So so this Do you was, feel like if your last 10 years would have all have been for nothing? <laughs> all for naught. <laughs> but absolutely, that's exactly yeah. what it was, that I didn't have the level of creativity that I knew was possible with the, some of this stuff or the level of flexibility or the level of autonomy, like you name it. It was like, it wasn't ever me being able to demonstrate what I knew could exist. And I, 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 I this love was you, my opportunity. You use the word creativity that. there, which I don't think men accountants or, or tax agents, bookkeepers, et cetera, would, is a word that would come to that. But you, you Not said, in a positive way, no. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> not a, bookkeep, creative but, bookkeeping and accounting is not in the book. No, right. But yeah. Maybe I should buy that URL, creative accounting. Oh, I think, I, I think another word too is looking at it holistically. Yeah. They tend to look at is the debits and credits in that T. Yeah, it kind of segmented yeah. your whole life. And this is a holistic pro- process. Like you said, yeah. you got a very tight stack and everything talks to one another and the yep. way it's supposed to. So that's yep. a very circular way. But it, I, I remember it's... the first time I wrote the diagram on a tech stack, I did it in a circle and everybody went, yes. what the hell is that? So yes. I had to put it in a line so they would understand what the fuck it was. I still have that. I still have a circle. I've drawn a yeah. circle. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. And in terms of the idea also was when going into realty tax that it would not be kind of a one and done type thing, but organizationally we set it up so that basically we could take all of the things that we learned and make up about another. building and growing this niche and then start to apply it to other niches, whether yeah. those are built what from scratch or acquisitions. And would you do that within yeah, real, yeah. as you said, there's so many sub-segments within real estate. Do you think, and crystal ball and everything, do you think that's in additional sub-segments of real estate or do you think no. that's restaurants? completely different. I think, completely right, different. Okay. Yeah. I hate restaurants. So no restaurants, <laughs> but like startups or paramedicals or yeah. biotech. So well, yeah, yeah, lots of look at the current tech stack you have and say, what parts of this can I reproduce? And maybe I have to add one more different one. A step That's and right. at the same time, keeping it simple. And I can do it with less effort the next time around because oh, yeah. I've already fine-tuned it to this point yeah. at this firm. And now what can we replicate or what can well, we leverage? It's kind of like a, a teacher develops a syllabus 
syllabus. Yeah. Fun, yeah. And you take a hundred hours to get a syllabus. You teach a class for a semester and you go, okay, boy, I spent a lot of time and my money and everything to do this. Did I make my profit? Yeah. Because you could take that syllabus and you could repeat it. Teaches in any class. class. And just yeah. tweak it just a bit. Yeah. Yeah. You're good to go. Yeah. Cool. Now, Rachel, like, do you, okay. And now yeah. you're, as a sole practitioner, two part, is it two part, is, is Melanie now your partner or is it just, are you still the head honcho? Uh, so we've got some paperwork to do, but she's basically, I mean, she's stepped into the role of COO. I am still CEO, but she has things well under control. We've beefed up her tax team for this tax season. Again, we've done, a, again, a lot of refining in the off season to make sure that things would move even smoother through this next tax season so that I could step back and jump into another challenge. Well, before we get to that, can I just, I feel like this is Rachel Fish, this is your life. But (laughs) but what I do want to ask is you've been able to do this at a way you've been very focused, very niche oriented, building this as as for all all intents and purposes, as a sole practitioner, sort of pushing your agenda. If if you sort of think about your Deloitte days and, and you sort of, and all the other larger firms that you've worked with, and, and Penny, I'm not sure if this was the case in Baker Tilly. I, I know BDO US, they bought SS&G or SS&H. I can't remember what it was. And that was very much a restaurant vertical. Do you see th- those larger firms cottoning on to the idea of that specialization in this space? Or is it oh, still a, just trying to throw everything? Yeah, absolutely. That's, and I mean, yeah. that, that was the case back at Deloitte where we had a craft beer guy who, and so he wanted to basically build his book of business on breweries. And so it was, okay, let's take a look at the F&B space and what are some of the tools and things that could be used in there. So, I mean, I think that now it's even more open and acceptable when somebody does have a passion and to be able to align that passion or that hobby with like, and that that expertise, that industry knowledge brings Mm -hmm. and actually use it and leverage it in their profession. So- And isn't that a crazy concept? What are the partners passionate about? And let's work on those types of businesses. I I think that's fantastic. You're asking me what an accountant is passionate. What craft beer? Like it could be craft beer. It could be- It could be. Ding. Photography. Like, yeah, you name it. There's a lot of, there's a lot of niches out there. And and everything is getting more and more specialized. And the apps that, they use internally to run their businesses are yeah. becoming very specialized. And you have to kind of figure out, okay, what GL works best with this? What yep. other, what else in that circle is hope causing the breaks? And yep. what can we put in to take that break off? Yeah. It's just continuous refinement, right? At that point, it's just, and, and then, I suspect them on that. The continuous refinement you, you is still ongoing. Uh, absolutely. It never stops. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's not like you, you get something and go, okay, we got this. Yeah, we're done. Next. Next. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not, yeah. That's not the way we did it this way last year and we did it those then. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Guess what? Shit changes. These apps change. <laughs> An app can go out of business. Another one could be better. Or even yeah. the one that you're working in just did something that removed another app having to be needed. Or yep. it did yep. something that went, oh, that no longer worked. That broke it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You changed what? Why did you do that? <laughs> well, that happened a couple of times just this week. My guess is realty tax is doing well. Business is good and it's growing yeah. and it's a nice business. And and as it you is. said, as you sort of alluded to, giving you an opportunity to step out and, and into another challenge. And I, I guess if we talk full circle, we started talking about Dex. We started talking about Receipt Bank. So what is next for you? Uh, or what is next they, now? What is next it? is Dex. Uh, yeah. That- <laughs> Uh, oh, come on, you set her up you, once. I know. Oh, I know. <laughs> you teed me up. Like, yeah, we um, didn't plan that, folks. <laughs> no. So, yeah, we. I had the opportunity to step into the GM for North America role here at Dex, formerly Lucy Bank. And so, I mean, honestly, Damien, if anybody understands this, I feel like it's you in terms of this is such a full circle moment to not only Receipt Bank being one of the first apps that I used, and that was kind of available on, in the ecosystem with, as I said, some of those other firsts, like Ignition, Practice Ignition, which is now Ignition, but also, and I was talking to the team, we had our O hands today, so I was talking to the team in terms of all of the things that I've done over this last decade were needed in order for me to step into this role. And I was asked, was this like a strategic path that I took 
to like go from one company to the next and one role to the next. And honestly, at the time, they felt like really great opportunities, great but different opportunities each step of the way. But they never would have happened without the step before it. So no, this wasn't a strategic, I'm going to be the the North American leader of DEX one day. But I wouldn't be here without this last decade and having gone through and had the conversations and built the networks and had the roles. I mean, Sage gave me an opportunity to work with accountants and alliances and product management in a way that I would never have had the opportunity before. Deloitte gave me the opportunity to to start to think a lot more strategically about the rolling out of different tech and how tech stacks fit together. I mean, even mergers and acquisitions. We we mm. now have Xavier Analytics as Dex Precision and Greenback as Dex Commerce. So, I mean, these are the things that that make it really exciting to step into this role and at the space and time where Dex is right now. It's really cool. And that's sort of interesting in terms of where Dex is right now, because Dex is so well known for Dex Prepare, which was the original yep. receipt bank. Receipt and bank. Yep. I'm at QuickBooks now, and and certainly throughout Australia, it's still talked. It's talked about very with a lot of passion and enthusiasm. Yep. How do you see sort of Dex taking that next step into evolving to be more than just Dex Prepare? Well, I mean, I think that's exactly what we have to do. We have to talk about more than just Dex Prepare. We can't stop the conversation at take a picture of your receipt, right? Because how many apps now do that? Yeah, to some degree. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, but they have a different purpose for what happens with that information. So how can we really demonstrate how far the product has come even since those original bookkeepers and accountants engaged for that time savings for the data component. How much more data are we able to capture and get into the product? How many more insights, you know, do we know? I mean, I remember, Damien, I don't know if you remember, when I was asking you for some data for Deloitte and our clients and how they use the product. And it took like weeks (laughs) for you to compile all of the things that we needed to better understand not only how our team use the product, but also how our clients were using the product, Mm. which were critical to how we actually managed our team. And now those are actually baked into the product and the insights that firms are able to get are phenomenal. So Yeah, I know. I I remember that and that dashboard and days since days since last submission and those times. And and they were all sort of indicators as to whether or not the clients were using it, the uh, early indicators that the client needed more attention and all that type of stuff. And and yeah, you're right. It's sorry, go on. It's like so what allows the cast part of this. Yeah, absolutely yeah, it's successful. So you have to you still have to deal with debits and credits. They still have to go in directly at the right. end tights. That's that's the special sauce. That's the gravy. That's yeah. The, that's and, the, and 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 to your point, Rachel, is a, a lot of apps now do the recognize that it's staples, clap can code it to um stationary or office supplies or whatever. Right. Yeah. It's, it's those insights that, that you were saying, um, that you were saying, Penny. I, I, I think we're sort of coming close to time because, and, and I think we could talk for another hour or so. We're probably, uh, yeah, and for so sure. Maybe, <laughs> and for maybe in, in, in three months' time or six months' time, we'll, we'll have you back on if, if that's okay, Rachel, just to sort sure. of to, to hear uh, now that you'll be getting back out into the talking to practitioners and talking to them more and helping them on that digital yeah. transformation journey. I guess, sort of, as you said, you, you sort of, Everything is an experience, all adding on to each one. I think if you're sort of talking to or any accounting firms out there today, like what's your one takeaway and and one piece of advice as someone that's come back into practice the the second time around? Yeah, Yeah. what's, what's your big learning? I would say maybe step back. Don't go in deeper, step back. And really have a vision for how you want the firm to operate end to end and what you want not only your client experience to be, but also your team member experience. And sometimes I think that we get so stuck in, did I use the right tax code or was the receipt grainy or right when I took a picture of those kinds of things that we don't actually kind of in an ideal world. What do I want my clients to feel about my firm and how we operate? And what do I want my team to feel about how we operate? When they go to work, how we represent ourselves. 
Yeah. And just take a step back and see if your current tech stack is delivering that for you. You may find that simplification is actually a better option than adding an additional tech or another dashboard or another KPI. There are tools for that. Don't get me wrong. But sometimes I would be surprised at how much scaling back is sometimes a, a good solution too. Fantastic. Pay. It sounds like chapter one of uh, I know. It's it's numbers. Like start with what is it that you want to achieve and what is it that you want yeah. to grow? Rachel, this has been phenomenal. I've thoroughly enjoyed catching up, reminiscing and hearing. We worked very closely at Deloitte. Then we sort of were, yeah, were based sure. in at Sage. And, and, yeah. and so it's been really nice to catch up and I wish you yes, the best sure. luck at Dex. Thank you hopefully so much. There's, hopefully there's a webinar or two with, with, with my name on it still floating somewhere in the, um, the document management system back there. So, yes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Penny, what about you as someone that's hearing sort of more about Rachel's journey and her experiences? What are your thoughts? Her journey has been amazing. And I don't think that Dex did a bad job in taking her on. That's a, this is a big, you've got all of North America. You're like the, yeah. the NHL, right? So I think that's pretty And I'm cool. Canadian, so that's fitting. Yeah. yeah that's fitting. Yeah. Yeah. We're not <laughs> East, We like our hockey too. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think it's pretty fascinating. And um, awesome. Rachel, I'm excited because I know, I met you a couple of years ago, so I know a little bit about the end of this journey. I didn't know yeah. a lot of the beginning. The beginning. Yeah, for sure. Well, even when I saw you last at Thrival, I wasn't talking about any of this. It was yeah. just the firm stuff, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And there's, there's yeah. still, as you and I both know, there's still a lot of space for people to learn about this stuff. Oh, oh, so oh absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, for and, sure. And, and most importantly, Rachel, them. thank you so much for sharing what you've learned. And, and that is one thing I think I, I didn't set out to, to be in the accounting um, industry profession, but, but that's one thing that I have loved. It, and, I, and one of the reasons why I think I have stayed is the willingness to share the, those experiences, yeah. the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's been phenomenal. Yeah. And, and thank you for sharing that along the way. So People want to find you. you. I'm assuming there's not too many Rachel Fishers on uh, LinkedIn. F I Not too many. Yeah. F-I-N-C-H. Yes. GM North America of Dex. So just make sure you can see that in the timeline. There are a few Rachel Fishes, but yeah, no one with a Dex border like I do no one or a banner. <laughs> um, and then on Twitter, it's Fish Books. F-I-S-C-H Books. Books. You can find Penny Breslin on Twitter and uh, LinkedIn. You can find myself. I am the only Damien Greatshead on LinkedIn, which is good. So if you do have any questions, <laughs> comments, if you'd like to ask us any questions, connect with anyone that we've had on the show, please don't hesitate to reach out. And if you have enjoyed today's episode, folks, please do jump on, give us a like, give us a share to your social networks to help us spread the word. But Penny, always good to see you. And Rachel, so good to catch up. Thank have you, a wonderful Rachel. day. Thank you. So good to see you both again. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye. 